It's evangelism aimed at an audience that preachers may not be reaching. We have to win this young hip-hop generation for Jesus Christ, and what we use is hip-hop music. Our music needs to change. Somebody doesn't want to be a player. Somebody don't want to be a thug. Somebody wants to live right. See ya! Help us reach a lost generation before it's too late. There are cursed things in the camp. You won't be able to face your enemies until you've gotten rid of these cursed things. The person found with the cursed things will be burned. He and everything he has, because he broke covenant and did this despicable thing in Israel. The Lord is wanting to do something so terrific in the lives of his people. The Lord is wanting to give us his authority. He's wanting to give us his power. And he's wanting to make room in us for him to move mightily in us. But he can't do that if certain things are hindering the work of God. And that's what I want to show us today in the Word. I want us to see the role of sin in the camp, the role of sin and how it rolled up in the camp, and how it kept the people of God from moving into the things of God. The Lord has really been challenging me as your pastor. He's been challenging me to help people to understand the realness of God. I messed around last week and found a sermon table when I was preaching when I was 19 years old. I was preaching in my living room where there were about six people in the church. And as I began to listen to this young man, I could hear his heart for God, and I started to cry. And what I realized that we were missing, that I'm missing, was that there was an awe and a reverence for God. Not because music was in the right key, not because it was in the right tempo, not because we had the right kind of syncopation, because there was an expectation when we gathered, God would show up. And when he'd show up, he might touch, he might heal, he also might call you out your sin. He might challenge you about what you're doing. I wanted to pastor a place and set an atmosphere where people who have been turned up by church can come and just be. But in the process of just being, I prostituted the goodness of God, allowing people to think that we could come to Jesus where we are and stay right there. The Lord tapped me on my shoulder. He said, you are failing to sanctify me before the people. You don't just do exploits in God because you can talk in tongues. You don't do exploits in God just because you can dress religiously. You don't do exploits for God just because you have the right theology. Do you live the life that the word of God is saying to us? And he said, the people have got to understand that there's a powerful pouring out of my spirit that I want to give, but the people must pour out and empty themselves of what holds them back. I've been shaking all week because the brother came to the stage when I was preaching last week. He said the rest of the story that God was going to kill the camp. We have lost such a sense of community that we think that one person's sin does not affect the whole group. We have messed up what anointing is. We think that anointing is goosebumps and goose pimples because somebody can sing you out your shoes. The truth of the matter is that anointing means that you have been set aside for the Father's use. It don't matter how you sing or how you preach or how you pray. Anointing means that when somebody sees you, they see that you don't run where everybody else runs. You don't sleep the way everybody else sleeps. You don't sex the way everybody else sex. You don't go overboard like everybody else does. To be anointed means you're set aside. We call people anointed because they can pack a stadium. We call men and women anointed because you feel goose pimples. But unless you look in their eyes and see that they have been with Jesus, they are gifted, they are talented, but they are not anointed. We have sold out the pop culture and we think just going to church and pulling some cheap grace over your eyes, doing what you want to do and think that it ain't nobody's doggone business. We have spiritualized it and called this thing grace and it isn't. It's presumption and foolishness, and it is deadly. I will take a living room of six struggling students with acne and hormonal troubles who have a heart for God than a gym that's hot and packed with people who want to play God. Souls are going to hell. People are dying. Homes are being broken up while we look the other way. This is a new day and we must call on the glory of the Lord. And what has resulted is that we have earned for ourselves a form of godliness, but we have denied the power thereof. I've got such a conviction 
reason that God is saying you need to move out the way because you're holding back what I'm trying to do. You are failing to sanctify the people in my eyes. You are deepening grace. And people need to know who they're serving. The church is where the people of God come to witness the power and the authority. It's where we are held accountable for transformation. It's not where we hide out in plain church. It's the word means eclectic and called out. There needs to be something different about what we say, how we live, and how we love. Let me finish this up. Joshua 8, verses 1 through 2. They destroyed this man. His family was destroyed. And I believe that it's symbolic that when God says, when I tell you to get a job done, do it. And I want you all to stay with me. Because it's not just the big things. Aiden killed the big things. He kept the small. It's not the big stuff that's pulling us down. Because we scared somebody gonna see the big stuff. We scared somebody gonna see the big we scared somebody gonna say adultery right over here. We're afraid that somebody who's praying, somebody who's spiritual is gonna see the big stuff. So we try to get the big stuff off of us. But the arrogance and the pride, and the competition, and the ugliness, and the racism, and the selflessness, and the murmuring. Isn't it funny that as soon as something goes wrong, we turn our face to God and say, what's your problem, rather than searching the camp? You better check out your camp. There's sin in the camp. I'm in Denver, and God has just blessed you. Thank you so much. This is just a oh my goodness, you blessed me with that broadcast. You don't know how you blessed me. And this is something you can battle the world with, man. I showed it to one of the pastors they love here. My name is Bruce. I just want to say thank you, sir. I really love these sermon songs. I have all you want to know, Pastor Jones and Creflo and all them. Basically, man, I just want to tell you that this has been a blessing in my life. I know sermon songs and life radio and all that stuff is bumping, and you getting your pub. But, man, this is a watch the way that you come out here on the West Coast. For real. Oh.